Shut, Shut the door, please. There's other people. All right. Doing to Governor Baker, March 12, 2020, order suspending certain proper provisions of the open meeting law, GL 30A, 18, and the governor's March 13, 2020, order imposing a limitation on the number of people that may gather in one location. This meeting will be conducted via remote participation. Specific information such as instructions and guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town website at www.yarmouth.ma.us. The video will be posted on the town's YouTube page as soon as we are able. As required, we, are, we must conduct a roll call vote in order to have a quorum today. Uh, Mr. Donovan, you are, um, I forgot to do that. Mr. Donovan, you're going to be allowed to vote today uh, as a member of the committee because we, uh, we don't have a, uh, two of our regulars here, Ted Deckel and nor uh, Andrew Laird. But we are required to do a roll call vote to authorize use of the Zoom meeting. Starting with Chairman Chapman. Here. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Uh, Frank. Frank Phil. Yeah. Um, Doreen. Levitan. Yep. yep. And I. Jay. Jay. And Richard <laughs> Simon votes yes. Uh, this is, uh, we have uh, affirmed that this is a, an approved method for this meeting. So let's go through the agenda. All right, let's start with the agenda. Um, I would ask, we're, we're starting with a discussion on the 2022 policies. I have a uh, approval of the minutes. Make a motion oh, to approve the oh, I'm sorry. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right, roll call. Yeah, are there any other, does anybody have any uh, other correct, does anybody have any corrections or changes to the minutes that were distributed? Okay, very good. Roll call vote. Okay. Ellen? Yes, yes, yes. Right there, yes. Radio, radio. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. Okay. All right. Minutes have been approved, and now we move on to the 2022. Um, first of all, I think we have asked that a representative or president of the league, uh, speak for the league. That would be me, Michael Barry. Okay. When you speak, please present your, your, your name and the league that you represent. Mm -hmm. And for anyone, just as an overview, for people to know that have not attended GEC meetings in the past and have never participated in any of the GEC events, I just want to say that Basically, we support the Yarmouth Golf Operation. They make the policies, they decide on what's good based on various input, et cetera, et cetera. We, they then bring it to us and we review them, make suggestions and we endorse policies. We do not make, the GEC does not make policy. Okay. All right. That anybody would like to speak? Yes, my name is Michael Barry. I'm a long term uh, resident of Yarmouth and long term uh, golf member, our annual pass holder, whatever, you, whatever it's called <laughs> at this time. Um, this is in regards to the 2022 league policies and procedure change. I'll leave it right here, which I believe everybody has seen. And uh, just so I'd like to go through this methodically and slowly. And I'd also like to speak right until the end rather than having 
any interruptions or questions or answers during the meeting if that's if that's agreed upon. And at the end, we could speak on it. Okay. Rather than because it could take a long time to go through all the words. Is that fair? Yeah, as a member of the public, uh, yes, we do not interrupt. Okay. Thank you. Um, the Yarmouth Golf Fleet presidents were made aware of the proposed by golf operations proposal by golf operations being approved by the GEC committee on 228 2022. As a result, I sent an email inquiring about these changes and CC 30 players, lead players, copied email below. Letter to golf operations on 3 1 2022. Scott, this league schedule has come to the dedicated Yarmouth Golf League members' attention. Is this document accurate? Was any of this communicated to league members so we could have a dialogue regarding the severe changes to the times and requirements? For the following reasons, we think this is an unreasonable policy change and on the surface appears punitive to the members. I have CC'd 40 thieves members and others as they deserve an answer as to why and why not. This on top of the change from the Chelsea system, which was a one week request for a booking time to a 36 hour request for a tea time appears to be placing members and league players at a severe disadvantage for any premium tea times. When thieves, number one, when thieves play early, we play in three hours to three and a half hours, same as the Raiders. Um, the course has made money the last two years so why are they still whittling away the members' ability to play? Many league players will be unable to play at the new proposed time, thus squeezing members out. Is that by design? As we are paying customers, why is there really any advanced communication on policies that affect us? Nothing is negotiable. It now states each league must have 30 players. Is that true? We will be taking this up with the GEC and ultimately the town manager and the selectmen. The lack of communication continues to be a problem for Yarmouth Golf, and I and many others are very disappointed. Please reply to all in writing as these people deserve an answer. No response to date from golf operations. Letter to GEC sent by me on 3 2 2022. Hello, Ellen, and fellow GEC members. I am forwarding this email that was sent to Scott Gilmore regarding leagues at Bass River. Please review and recommend next steps. Many of us are just very dissatisfied with these policy changes and even understand why golf Yarmouth continues to make it more difficult to play at optimal times. We would like to stop this change until such time that our group's voices can be heard by GEC and the town selectman and manager. The lack of communication and the severity of the changes warrants a discussion and or a hearing to determine if these changes are necessary and done in good faith. We are paying members and deserve a platform to hear the reasons these changes are necessary. Changes after a membership are paid is in bad faith, is opposition. Please share with GEC and appropriate town officials as you see fit. We thank you for your consideration on this serious matter. I look forward to your response. Uh, there was no response from that either. Um, I also intimate that this change is being done after many members have already paid their annual fees with the understanding that their leagues would remain the same. There was never any discussion, negotiation, or hint of such a severe change until we lead to league times and policies. I feel that this is not the bill of goods we, we signed up and paid for, so therefore it should be characterized as a policy rule change performed in bad faith and with absolutely no transparency. We, the members, believe that we have continued to support golf operations and we have walked through the growing pains of the last few years with our golf operations teams and our GEC team, ultimately agreeing and supporting the rate hikes that were well beyond the 5% agreement with the town. We agree that we have a wonderful resource. We have operated in good faith with total transparency. I can only speak about the Sunday morning groups. We would like to play first and set the pace as we play faster than the public, well under the four hours requested pace of play. If we are relegated to meeting a 30 player minimum, these leagues will no longer exist. If we are forced to play at 11 a.m. on Sunday, these leagues will be reduced to a group or two, ultimately abolishing the 40 thieves and the Raiders permanently. This feels like a very small win with a very negative impact. 
If it goes through, many longtime dedicated golfers will feel as though they were not even considered when making these changes. It tears at the fabric of what a municipal golf course offers and devalues the benefit of living in Yarmouth as a golfer. Being a part of something that has tradition means something. I feel like these Sunday leagues need to stay and continue to have the charm of a Cape Cod town run golf course should have. The GEC and operations will use metrics like the National Golf Foundation and compare themselves to other clubs and say no one else is doing it that way. Are those great reasons to destroy what we have and are already successful? No. This is not any regular public course. This is a municipal Yarmouth called the Yarmouth Residence First. The comparisons are, just, are not fair or relevant. We do not understand how how much and what would be gained. As a longstanding tournament committee member, I have personally worked closely with Scott, Dennis, Becky, and team. They are good people and we have found many solutions that satisfy the management and the members in the past few years. We have held members accountable to a standard that ensures cooperation that may have been lacking in the past. We want to consider a true partnership and hope we can all embrace that and continue on this path we have developed. Respectfully, please consider our position and weigh the value and the impact. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say the GEC did not receive your email. I don't know where it went but it did not go to Golf Yamath and I had head check as well. And we did not receive it. Okay. Are there other uh, members of the uh, other uh, leagues that are hopefully are here tonight to speak? Yes, yes, yes uh, yeah. Uh, Bill Farrell. Hello. 60s Golf League. Okay. You hear me? We can. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Mike totally. And uh, our league is the biggest league, possibly on Cape Cod. You have 92 golfers. We tee off Wednesday morning, 7 o'clock, play very quickly. And the issue is basically the same thing. It's going to slow us down. And our last tee time could be 11.50 in the morning. So now you got people out there till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, if you've got 12 groups out in front of us, it's going to slow us to a crawl. That's a big problem. We have a field day once a month, and uh, we have a shotgun start. Now, if we have a shotgun start at 9 o'clock and there's 12 groups out there, I don't understand how that's going to work. <laughs> and one of the big, other big issues is when you had the contract this year, you added that the members have to eat at that restaurant that overpriced restaurant. And I don't understand why you even put that in the contract because that restaurant has nothing to do with Yarmouth Golf. It's franchised out. And that being said, our members have money in the pro shop that can't be used in their restaurant. So it's like taxation without representation. So I don't agree with that at all. But, you know, when you have a league as big as ours and Yarmouth Golf depends on us when you get new people sign up, they want to join a league and right away, they, they give the 60s golf league, which is fine. We welcome new members. However, with the change coming up, I already am going to lose 22 of our existing members, taxpayers that love golf and been playing in the 60s leagues for 30 years or more. So you really need to reconsider it. And I don't understand May and June when there's nobody on the Cape that wants to play at 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning, why you want to sell those tea times from 7 to 9. So re please reconsider. You're changing a lot of lives here. Thank you. Any other leagues? Yeah. Uh, yes, hi. My name is Cliff Kersted, um, newly elected president uh, for the Raiders. Uh, is it okay to speak? Please. Yeah. So um, I, I've been a member uh, of the golf course for uh, for six years now, and, and uh, I was really excited about moving to Yarmouth and, and becoming part of the Yarmouth uh, culture. 
And uh, one of the things, there's several things that have happened in the last six years. Uh, in the beginning, um, we were so, we were sort of um, promoted to uh, encourage people to join the leagues. Uh, and a couple of things occurred. Uh, we got a discount. I remember back then uh, for being a taxpayer in the town of Yarmouth. We also, if we brought in uh, new players, we got a little medallion where we got, uh, I don't know, I think it was a hundred dollars worth of um, golf balls down at the driving range. Uh, and I most recently joined the league. Uh, really excited about that, playing early in the morning on a Sunday. And I know that many of the members that play uh, with the Raiders have already told me that they they can't. There's no way they can play uh, at 11 o'clock. So it's really uh, it, it's been going downhill, and I don't really understand why. I wish there was somebody could you know just speak out and say you know why they're making these changes for the benefit of who and for what. But uh, I for one. Uh, cannot play golf on a Sunday uh, at 11 o'clock. And I really would like to know why they changed it from early in the morning to 11. Um, I think it's, it's uh, really a sad day for our league. Um, And I think I was told uh, by a a person, I asked the question, you know, why, why the change? And I was told by this particular person that this is the only course on the Cape that offers league play before 11 o'clock in the morning. And I I asked, well, why is that a reason to, to make a change? That's really not a reason. Um, So uh, if that's the reason, I I really think it's deplorable. And I, I really uh, love to get into the battle and help my guys out a great, great, great group of guys that meet every Sunday. And uh, I, I don't understand the change. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that this has been, has it gone to a committee? Has it gone to the to the public committee of Yarmouth to for any discussion? That's my question. Um, if anybody can answer that, is this like the is this cast in stone, or is this a, a proposal that needs to be um, talked about? Uh, it's, it looks like all the paperwork play here that it's um, that it's finalized, and I, I don't really understand that. Uh, first of all, league play does not have to go any further than the golf operations or GEC um, for change, any changes to the policy of golf. Mm-hmm. It is not like the fee that have to be um, approved by the Board of Selectmen. So, oh, I, uh, well, I, I read different to that. Um on the website. I thought it went to the Board of Selectmen for discussion. Uh, if we have, if we are asking for fees, for fee increases, if we are asking for different pass holder accommodations, yes, we have to take approval of the fees to the Board of Selectmen. The, within okay. the golf that the Board of Selectmen does not um, approve or disapprove. So, okay. and would like to say, there are equal number of people probably that have come to us to say, we can't play golf on Sunday mornings because we can't get a tea time. So we wouldn't, as part of Yarmouth Golf, we are trying to do equitable play for all pass holders. Also, the National Golf League, which came to Yarmouth four years ago. It was two years ago, 2019. And the recommendations. They recommended that we move, first of all, they moved, they recommended we have no weekend league play. They also recommended that all league play be moved to afternoon play. Well, either after yeah, 10, or, or either after, after 10 minute. or later in the day. Correct. And as you know, we are an enterprise fund. We have to support the fund and the improvements and the expenses and the capital improvements that go into making keeping Yannick Ball um, as it is now. So we have to balance that between daily play and 
members, fee holders. And this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to set a balance where we can accommodate as best possible all fee holders and league players and daily play as well. Yeah. Would anybody else like to from the committee? Well, just one other, just one other thing, and and you know, it's, I'm sorry if you didn't hear about this, but we have discussed it in our meetings over the last three or four months, I think it was, um, at different points, and um, so it has been out there, and everybody is always welcome to join the committee at any time and provide input at the beginning. Um, we didn't have very much as far as direct input, except for conversations we've had with people on the golf course. So um, you're always welcome to join the join the meetings and uh, and provide your input at that time too, before so you don't get caught less um, after things are right. are put in place. And you may may remember, Bill, we the first meeting when we got together to discuss league play was back in October of 21. Yes. Uh, and and I, I recall, actually, you spoke at that meeting um, on a number of topics. I believe, Mike, you were there, too, uh, with uh, Mike Sajerjan, because we were also talking about tournaments that day. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been out there. Uh, it's just maybe not gotten to, to the level where everybody was aware of it, but it has been discussed at at least three meetings uh, which have been posted and videos have also been posted uh, of those meetings. So we've been trying to be as transparent as we could be. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, a part of the um, analysis uh, that, yes, I'm sorry. So as part of the analysis also, we did pr uh, provide uh, some research uh, on what is going on in the market. Um, certainly uh, not all courses are the same. Uh, all courses on the Cape with the exception of Yarmouth do not have weekend leagues. Um, they all have different levels of support ranging from no support for leagues, which is the standard in Barnstable. Barnstable does not have any leagues at all. Um, Yar uh, Dennis has leagues, but are currently, they are in an every other week mode. Um, captains, I'd say is probably closest to us uh, in terms of uh, the, the number of leagues and the league play that they do have. And I think the last group, which is uh, Harwich, Harwich um, has one course and more members than we have for two. And so, they have been in a situation where they've had to adjust their, um, the percentage of uh, play that's done on their courses to 70% per weeks and during the week for member play. And partially because they do have some very active league play there, uh, which takes um, a significant portion of that extra time. So every town is in a slightly different situation. Uh, but it is, but it is sort of, we are unique in providing uh, any weekend play. Um, now, the, the other thing that is, uh, other towns also have, they, they're not really leagues, but they do operate sort of as leagues. So in Barnstable on Mondays, they have an afternoon quota tournament which uh, draws about 150 people. Harwich has the same sort of thing on Thursday afternoons in their course, which attracts about 50 people per week. Uh, the fees for those, I think, are 15 to $20 per player per week. Um, and then finally, there is a group in Barnstable, which provides early morning league support. They're called the dew sweepers. And they, they provide uh, uh, a level of support for both people who are part of the group as, as well as other people who have people who come. Brewster, in Brewster, I'm sorry, in Brewster. So there's a wide range of league support. I think all towns do support their leagues. Certainly Yarmouth is one of the, the highest in terms of support 
Uh, some of the specifics I know that Scott was talking about is uh, the as leagues change in size, he he tries to accommodate. I think Bill, you would say this. He tries to accommodate the the increased number of players who are in leagues by expanding the amount of time that's allocated for league play. So I think in and I think from my perspective, the last piece of this is we are in a very uh, interesting time. Our, because of COVID, play has gone up per person an average of 20, 25%, where we used to play 36 rounds a year on average, and that has jumped to almost 50. And that has created, again, that little bottleneck in um, availability of feedback. We all want to play more rounds, we do have some players who, you know, they're just single guys and they go out and gals, they get out there and they play their 200 rounds a year. So it's not like you can't play. Uh, and the other bit of data is we have a, a real issue where, not a real issue, but we have a, uh, an untapped opportunity in that even during the peak of COVID, we still had over 20,000 afternoon rounds unused during the afternoons. So which sort of says, you know, there's, there's capacity here. And it's just a question of capacity. You know, there's a limited capacity in the morning. Finally, I think that the other piece of the pie has been the changes that the golf department has made on the intervals. Now, in the past, when we had the seven and a half minute intervals, if you weren't out first thing in the morning, how long was that round? If you went out in the afternoon? It was that five to six hour round sometimes. Since Becky has moved to the 10 minute intervals on Bass River, that means that the pace of play can be more consistent. Maybe not three hours, but certainly not, you know, the, the extensive time that it used to be. Um, same thing on uh, Bayberry Hills. We, we there, they went from that seven and a half minutes to nine minute intervals. Again, stretching that out. And I think the last piece of the puzzle is also the new GPS systems that are being installed, which allow for better monitoring, and, and better monitoring of the uh, pace of play so that remediation can be taken faster. So I think for a number of reasons, I, I'm hoping that for purposes of this year, that we would at least entertain the possibility that this could be worked out. We have a whole bunch of changes that have come down. We do expect this year, at least the forecast is for this year, is to have fewer people or less rounds per, pe per person as we start to see the COVID effect diminish. So it's not going to be the same amount of pressure that we've had certainly during the past year. We have this new system, the new um, um, choice, uh, yeah. A club profit system that's going in. And again, it's not every, the biggest change there is a change from being able to request a time to being able to book a time. And I think that is a key factor. And I would encourage everybody to, you know, sort of let's also think about how uh, all of these different factors can play into actually making it possible to be able to have good lead play, even if it's not sort of that crack of dawn. Um, Let's, I'd crack like of to dawn. also, you done? No, one more thing. Okay. Um, in towns, by the way, the other part of this is in towns which have only one day a week, a week for lead play, it is not atypical for their leagues actually to play three times a week. They simply use, they simply book the tea time separately. So one of the things I've observed is that it is, it's not like you have to have a block time to have a successful league. It's a matter of, again, getting that at least one block time to uh, put to put in to help solidify a league. So some of my thoughts. I'd like to address also your comment about the course has made money in the last two years and why are we whittling away at the members' ability to play? Um, we are not 
whittling away at a member's ability to play, we are hopefully staying in the black to make sure that our courses continue to be good and continue to correct some problems with the courses to improve ability to play. For instance, the links. Rainy days, I'm sure you, I've gotten stuck in the mud. I'm sure everybody else has too. There are times when we cannot do the red to blue, white to blue to white, et cetera, because of the problems on the links finding a ball in the weeds, et cetera. This will all be so that we really will have, instead of having an 18 hole course and a nine hole links, we'll have nine, three nine hole courses that can be more easily used for all members to get more of good time play available. And we, if you've been at the courses, you will see we have many, capital improvements that need to be done to keep up the infrastructure of the course, which have not been addressed for several years because of um, lack of financial. We have made the money now and we are making sure that we keep a good um, list of capital improvements to make sure that the Yarmouth courses stay in good shape for years to come. Can I follow up? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, your explanations. It sounds like you folks have already made your decision. Um, it doesn't sound like we're here for a hearing. It sounds like we're here to discuss what's going to happen no matter what we say. Uh, that's what I just heard. This has already been decided on. Um, I was of the understanding that someone was supposed to reach out to the league presidents on these matters. Nobody has. I was told by Bill Scott, the town administrator, that either the GEC or Scott had reached out to all the league presidents to discuss this. And that, I talked to Scott and Scott said, that's not true, it wasn't him, it was the GEC. Now the GEC can say, but in the meantime, there has been no um, communication, there's been no negotiation. It's like, here it is, good luck. So 11 o'clock tea times, this abolishes, this does not alter our leagues. This abolishes our leagues. We will not be playing at 11 o'clock, I guarantee you. A lot of the people are summer people, but they are weekend people. They leave after golfing on Sunday morning. Some of the people, their wives aren't gonna let them go. So basically that takes up their entire day because they're gonna be basically from the morning well, what was he going to say to their, to their wife that I'll be here till 9, 930, and then I'm on my day till I'll see you at 5? Um, no, this is not about moving in. This is four hours we're talking about. Now, on the thing, it says move a couple hours. This is four hours. That's a half a day almost at daylight. Um, so I think this is extremely penal. So you can say all the things about the National Golf Federation and all the other things. And that, that may be true. I don't, I don't disagree with you all, but you can always use a metrics to any argument. This is about golf. This is not a pure business transaction. Um, and I think there's some answers that we still have not heard. If I can finish 10, just a second. We, there's so, still some answers that we have not heard here out of all the questions that I proposed. What is to be gained? Who's going to want 6.30 tea time on Sunday morning? Who's going to want that? Nobody. We go in, we get out of there. And I'll take it. Good luck to you. Okay. Okay. I, I, you know, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think you're just saying that to, to, to both of your arguments right now. But I don't believe that's the case. And I really feel like we're getting real over here. How many, how many uh, members of your league on Sunday morning? Well, I'm like 16. It's only like four groups. So you're asking the town to provide a private tea time for 16 guys. They have the 60 plus years, yes. 60 plus years, Ted. I'm not asking anything. I'm asking to stay with what we already had. I'm not asking for anything new. No, you are. There are more than 16 members, uh, pass holders in the town. So this is new? No, it's not new, but it's... 
this is part of the issue. What's Why the is uh, this guy, guys? This is Sean Dassey. I'm a 12 year member. I, 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 if I might just ask a couple of questions myself, because Mike's doing a lot of the talk and I'm one of the 40 thieves. I support all these leagues, though. Um, first off, uh, me spending the money, which I already did, and I do live off the Cape and have a house in Yarmouth. I already paid for my membership. So am I going to get that money back? Because typically when you pay for something, you know what you're buying. But what I bought is not what I uh, expected. So do I get my money back? Is that an option? It is an option. So so you're saying you, in good faith, you guys let me pay for something that was not what I'm getting. So I, I bought a car, but I didn't get four tires. Is that what you're saying? So I, I bought two days worth, potentially worth of golf, but now I'm going to get one of those taken away because I'm one of those people with a wife who really enjoys spending time with me on the beach. I know it's shocking, but she does. And so now I'm going to tell her that I'm gone all day uh, on the weekend. Um, it was great. I could get out there, play three hours of golf and be on the beach at 1030. It was, it was fantastic. Um, but now you're telling me that, um, which is for money, because this is if anyone is going to try and tell me that this is not a money grab, you're crazy. I'm not believing it. So for, for, for money, which, of course, which is already making money in this golf boom we're in, you're going to let the that the leagues just disappear. You're just going to push the pass holders, I guess we're called, aside um, to grab some more money. Is, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. No. Oh, yes and no. I heard yes and no. Which one is it? You heard no. no. You heard no from all three of us. Okay. So, what, so, so, so help me understand. The first thing I just like, and I don't want to ramble, but so I, I paid money in good faith, but I'm not getting a product in good faith. And no one has a problem with that. That's how business should be done. Now, Sean, the, the issue the issue comes down that there's a committed tea times for a small group of people. No, no, no. I'm it. sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I just would like an answer to I paid $1,200 for a product that I've had for 12 years, and then that product changed. I'm wondering, is that in good faith? You collected my it's, money in good faith. You have the opportunity to play it any other time. I'm sorry? And also, no. still make a tea time on Sunday morning. So, so if, has this decision been made? Is that what I'm hearing? Can we please just keep this respectful? No, it is respectful. I'm not respectful. Just, much, just, just yeah. It, I just, just I don't everyone, want to waste anybody's more time. I'm not. Just I don't want to waste any more time. If have we heard from all the leagues yet? Um, I'm so is no one going to answer my? I'll get off the Zoom. Is no one going to answer my question? So the the, the thirteen hundred dollars I paid, which was part of that for twelve years, was to have a morning tea time, which was great. That's now gone. So now what I bought, I'm not getting. Is that just how life's going to be? Is, is anyone going to answer that part of it? I think what you paid for was a membership, a pass holder ability to play on the Yarmouth golf courses for the season of 2022 and to join any of the leagues that are available. And so if they move those leagues, if they move those leagues to five o'clock at night, I would just have to deal with that. Is that what you're telling me after I paid for it? chose to join in a league you might sign up you can go on the club profits all right with thank you and thank sign you. up blue raiders basically you don't want any leagues false no. false That's not true yeah. no that is not true you do not want a sunday morning league which has a small amount of play which is for, for equitable call so that all the pass holders have the chance to play. Well, I hope I see you out there at 6 30 on the Sunday yeah. morning. Nobody else is out nope. there. They are. I have one last question. Has this decision been made? We have endorsed this, yes. Goodbye, so everybody. It. Good luck. So there's no negotiation. This is basically a hearing just for the sake of a hearing. Um, I'd like to jump in. Um, I was hoping to hear from all leagues. I'm not sure if we've heard from all leagues yet. I heard from the old 18-hole women's league that they have no problems. They didn't have any changes. Yes, yes, they, they did. did. Yes, two times. Two hours. Two hours. We went to 9 o'clock like we did. Yeah, yeah, not from 7 to 11 on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so there's many things going on here at one time, right? We are trying to be equal to all, make money, obviously, many, many things go into our decisions. Now, there's certain things that are available to us that we can help and hurt and whatnot, but we're trying to help all people here. And I've been talking to my team here to see 
what could be a possible solution to make almost this be good for everybody? You know, going off at 7 30, 8, 9, that's not equitable at all. So I've been talking to Dennis, I've been talking to Becky. We would like to throw this offer out that we would open up early Sunday morning at 5.30 for you guys to go off, but it must be clear by seven o'clock. Right. Yep. We always love the early can you, times. Mike, can you please, just for a minute, let the GC talk, then they can oh, talk to you. Just ask the question, sorry. I mean, my only about you know, yeah, obviously the big question there for is also the impact this is going to have on yours, particularly your maintenance staff as well as your regular staff. So ma maintenance gets there at five o'clock every morning, so there will be no impact there. They'll be clear of five thirty tea times. The only issue that would become, which I don't think would become, because we switched to nines, is they would hit, but they shouldn't hit that area before seven a.m. to make any kind of noise that would be any part of a problem. So even if they did, it shouldn't be any part of a problem. So there'll be no mower problem as we got. Not in Bayview. No, we're talking Bass River. Bass River, because we, because we, we, get, at, the we get there at five anyways. That's not a change. Right. We get there at five anyways. So we, we mow the, the way that we usually mow. We stay away from that area until that time. What we're saying is instead of six, we're going to open up Sunday morning at 530 and let that so the whole sheet becomes available to all membership at 7 a.m we're gonna come in early to make this accommodation for these sunday groups to come in and get this happen is to come in early sunday morning so we clear the sheet by seven by seven now if i may can i can i say one thing please things going on here it so has, I think that's a great one second, please. It has to stay in one block. Block. One. So according to Becky Dennis, there's 32 between the two groups. You got to join together. So whatever your wet weights, you guys, whatever, it's going to be one group going off 530 straight to 7. Straight to 7. Nine times. Yep. Five times a day. Well, it's one group. You exist yeah, under one group. Okay, got it. One group. Okay. Yeah. 36 slots. But that way you can, we can clear the sheet so we can make it more equitable for everybody else starting at seven o'clock. It's, it's a little more work on to come in early. Get this done. That's why they're there. We can clear. We can have no issues and no impact for the rest of the day. I think this is a pretty reasonable compromise at this point. Now, the we did is is entirely something separate, but I think this can help the Sunday. Dennis and Becky have both supported this to, to make it, you know, they, they're the ones that are going to be coming in early to make this happen. So um, we just, we're not out to get anyone. We're out to just make it equitable and fair for everyone. <clears throat> Proposal to the GC to help with this solution. Well, it's a new new option that you had, hadn't been presented before, so it's something that we didn't hear about. But yeah, I mean, if, if, uh, if it works for you, it's key for operations, and it doesn't affect those homeowners. It will not, because we, we don't change anything on the maintenance end. I talked to Jared this morning extensively and what would possibly occur, and no matter which way, I mean, the. It's adamant that we need to make sure it's foursomes going off. Yep. And you can't do anything besides a foursome for at least the first couple of years because if you were to send a twosome or even single, there's no possible way we can stay ahead. So it has to be clear that it's also that's foursomes well, until like right? towards the end. If you need if you need to do a twosome or threesome, they have to go off towards the end. So that would be the only way they would possibly get caught. So if a foursome, we can stay ahead of the and just curious, uh, how what months would it be for? Well, obviously we can't go <laughs> at five a.m. right until the light falls for it. But as the leagues ramp up and play ramps up, it all just kind of you know will come in half an hour early every Sunday as we adjust. So if we're going off at six thirty now, we'll go off at six as the day goes through. Mm -hmm. 
Here is a schedule that we're used to. Rebecca usually prints out so that when, we, when, when the daylight adjusts, and obviously in the summertime when we have massive amounts of daylight, that's, so we're uh, that's April something. through October. But we will go once the leaks start Sunday morning, we'll make sure we're in half an hour early to make sure they go off half an hour earlier so they clear within that hour and a half time frame. No, we talked about starting the leaks in May, beginning of May. It's daylight driven, so it's one of the data when there's right. no light. Yeah, so I have to take a look at the sunrises. sunrises and see what time that starts. So. I mean, I think technically our lead season is April through October, but right. yeah, all of these kind of do something their their own way on that. But it's, April and October aren't as heavy either, so right. It's obviously off seasons, but. Dick, you should be able to unmute yourself. Sorry if you're, um, if you can't, let me know. Okay, first let me okay, explain. Does that mute you? Yeah. Is your phone on as well? Phone on as well. Or is this getting like a feedback? Yeah. Well, he's in. <laughs> can you move? Scott, can you mute us as well? Because it might. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't recognize that. Uh, is it possible to start? Uh, is it okay. possible to start? Uh, is it possible to start? Uh, is it possible to start? Is it This technology sucks. Okay, is this better? Yes. Okay. I, I just had one comment that I wanted to add about Howich, uh, because I, I wasn't clear in looking at the stuff that uh, Richard sent out, um, what it was showing about Howich, but Howich runs their men's league on Wednesdays for 120 people starting at 6 a.m. Uh, when that's allowed up to 10 a.m. The women's league runs on Tuesdays starting at 6 a.m. during the season until 9 a.m. So they, they, the men accommodate up to 120 people. Uh, I don't know anything about their Thursday league that was, that was referenced. Um, and their, their nine hole is similar to what our nine hole has had been doing they you know they play on the back on the back nine of Howich. Um so I, ju I just want to add that information. Just go ahead and speak focus. Yeah. Scott, no Farrell. Hello. Is someone acknowledging people who have their hand held? Go ahead, Bill. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Scott, I, I sent you a request. Um, and we start May 4th. Now, May 4th, I don't expect anybody looking for tea ties between 7 and 9. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So should we negotiate May, early June for the tea ties we already have? And then open up discussions after that. Hang on, hang on a second. So let's let's get through the Sunday and we'll tackle the, the weekday. Okay. Somebody had there else wanted to talk on here. I'm not sure who that is. 
Which one is Cliff? Yeah, Cliff. Cliff, I think it's yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah, this is Cliff. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I don't know who was speaking uh, about the the early tea times at 5:30. That sounds to me uh, like a like a good uh, compromise. Um, I know that most of the guys that uh, play golf in in the league uh, don't don't mind getting up a little early, uh, but it certainly is a good compromise compromise as opposed to playing at 11 o'clock, which I think will definitely destroy the league. I will also say, you know, most of these guys have been playing playing in this league since like 1980. And, and I don't understand why why the change now. It seems like the golf course is is um, is successful, so I'm not I'm not sure what what the reasoning is behind the change. Um, why fix it if it's not broken? But I think 5:30 is a is a good compromise. Times have changed. It's broken. Well, I, uh, the amount of play has changed. The pressure on key times has changed. Um, this is, it's not 1980 anymore. There was some I, I know that. Also, we had two years of COVID and, and everybody uh, was working at home and all kinds of young men were down there playing like every day, uh, early uh, morning. Uh, I think COVID is gone as far as the golf world is considered. Uh, I, I think that you won't see that again. So I think what was going on for the last two years is, is should be sort of put aside. Um, just my feelings. I mean, I so uh, I just want to speak. Yeah, I would like to try to see the tea times request back to at least five days in advance to, for the members. The system um, doesn't work that way. That's the problem. The system do, it, it it's doesn't not, work that way. It's not even. It's not okay. Even, so a non-member, like last year, non-member book. 20 tea times one day and 20 tea times the next day during prime time that lets the non-member not playing. I work 50 hours a week, Monday through Friday. The only time I get to play is on weekends and I get blocked out because of these people who come in from out of town and gives me no rights to three days before. And it gives everybody else a right, the non-member to have their choice of times. It's, it's just not right. Peter, I'll address yours thing in a minute. Okay. It's a totally separate thing from the league. Yeah. Um, but that's my um for the Sunday. I would like to put that on to your recommendation. Yeah, I'd, I'd support that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to? That meets what that you guys think. I just have one comment. I, I, I commend Scott for his flexibility. Yes, I, I think this that. is exactly what I we were hoping for right. in the first place. So we're not asking to move the world, but just to work together, as we have done. We have been for several years working very, very well together with golf operations. And we've made a lot of great wins that the, 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 these guys here aren't getting as killed at the front desk as they used to because we don't allow it. We penalize people that don't act right. We uh, penalize people that don't show up at the tee times. We don't allow them to play in the next tournament. We let them know. And we give a list to these folks. So we think that we're walking hand in hand. And this is exactly how I was hoping it would go. So for you leaving it in the pocket, watching my blood pressure get boiled, I'm a little pissed. <laughs> But thank you, Scott. Yeah, I appreciate it. I do would like a formal endorsement from the GED. That we have possible. a someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that the Sunday morning league start at Sunday morning league. It will be league. one one, one league. league a half an hour ahead of any other day. Half an hour ahead of any other day. Second. All right, let's take a roll call. Oh, roll call vote. Yes. All right, Richard? Yes. Aye. Jay. Ted. Yeah, sure. Doreen. Doreen. Aye. Frank. Aye. Ellen. Yes. Dick. Dick. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, it passes. <coughs> All right. Justin, you are. Thank you. I uh, 
just, just so you know, I mean, it's not like we were trying to be unfair. No, I know that. that. It was trying to make sure it's also fair to everybody else. I too. understand that. And they were committed, so. I absolutely have no uh, no will towards anybody. I've just no, always been a, I, but I think it's right. You guys do what you think is right, which is perfect. That's how it's supposed to work. That's why we meet and talk. Thank you so much. Did you send your application in the city? No. Only play it on the wrong keys. You can only play in one league. You can only play in one league. No, we will. We will. We have separate. We have different four league questions. We yeah. We just took care of the. We just took care of Sunday. I think there were some questions. Hold on. We we got to figure out the weekday. Yeah. Bill was talking about having more flexibility on the off seasons and the shoulder seasons. Right. Um, I'll, let, I'll let Becky and Dennis weigh in if that's doable. What, what I almost envision a scenario where you could possibly do the same thing here. We could go a little earlier for them. I know the women's league like to be later. It's a, it would be a situation where you got to do one and the other and stick with it so we can plan accordingly. Correct. So it, we're trying to be equitable for all. If you, you want to go early, you got to clear it quickly. If you want to go later, it's not a problem. Then that whole thing is open until you go out anyway. So I'll let Becky and Dennis weigh in here for a little bit. 19 tea times. So we'd want to clear the tea sheet by what time? Well, hey, hey, Bill, are you on? Yes. How many players you got? Maximum. Is Matt, what's your max right 70, now? 72. Well, let me say this about that. Depends on if we're seven or nine. I got 22 players that are going to drop if we have to tee off at nine o'clock. So I would think we averaged about 50. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm proposing, Bill, is that we, we do the same thing with you on Sunday. We move you early or you play at nine, one or the other. The seven is not, is not in the cards. You can't do the seven. It's got to be early. Real early or nine o'clock. So, can I ask a question? Are you talking about five o'clock in the morning or five thirty? What league are we talking about? Sixties. Sixties. It's going to be the weekdays. Weekdays. Wednesday. Saying that if the sixties are playing at if we start seven, six thirty, you're asking the women will be playing at six thirty. What I'm saying is, like, uh, again, I need more out of this than they are. They are on the front lines. They can answer these questions better than me. But I'm saying that. It may not work, but I'm saying what a possibility could be is you leave it to the league to decide they need either go at 5 30, 6 in the morning, whatever the first seat time, you're usually a half an hour behind on the weekdays to get more stuff done. And they clear the teach sheet by a certain amount of time so we can open it up as quick as possible. Or it's the other way where we open up a four hour, three and a half hour window to be more. Sure. So you can't go back and forth. It's going to be set in stuff. A league will choose. So they league are. will choose okay. which way they want to go. I'll clarify. Talk about that yeah. more than, than I'm. And then I think I also think during the week it's a little bit less of an issue. Um, so during during the week it's more maintenance issues. You got a lot to right. do. Um, but certainly, if we know going ahead of time that the ladies league, for example, doesn't want to play till nine. That gives us a better opportunity to do things on maybe that day. Or likewise, if you know they're going out early, then we, we have to prepare for that to go out early. You know, mm -hmm. it's just about we need to know what's occurring on a daily basis. We can't do the back and forths and, the, and all that. We need to just be ready to go. What does that that what you just said? Does that mean that you could do an early league for the men and the women can go off a little later? With no, the women. Did, oh, oh. Sorry. Yes, that's sorry. what I mean. That's what you know. Well, I'm not sure what I think that's what they're saying. Yes, yes. that's what we're saying. The yes. league is, and each individual league will choose their right. time. But are they going on the same day or are these two different days? Two different days. Two different two different days. days. Yeah. Yes. Men are ones. Yes. So we can, so we're not changing any days. What we're saying is we want to clear the T sheet if you're going early as quick as possible. I know the 60s league have a lot of people and we're not trying to freeze anyone out or anything that we opened up plenty more tea times for them. It's all about getting out. We want you to play. We don't not want you to play, but we want to clear so that everyone else can play too. We don't want to be uh, shutting people out as, as much as possible. So um, if we knew ahead of time, like the 60s want to go early, that's fine. We're playing accordingly. But generally, we're always there an hour before anyone goes out anyway. It's not mean in sense. So we can 
usually clear everything coming our way. Um, especially on weekdays anyways, because we had that front back going on anyway. So, so, so what, okay, let's start with that. Let's do it maybe individually. The, 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 the 72 tea time, 72 guys. If you started at 6 a.m., they'd be out by 9. The last tea time is 9 o'clock. And what time is it now that they start? 6.30. 6 6 so they have so started at half an hour? Yeah. yeah. I mean, would they be, how about in like, you know, July and August, we could even start 5.30 there. It would be the same time as like there, Sunday. You're but that's half not an hour. hour prior to the tea time. Prior to the tea time. Tea time. Move me out as quick as possible. Bill? Yeah, what's the offer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, it's a half an hour earlier than you're going up now, is what it sounds like. Regardless, depending on the time of year, it'd either be um, the 5.30 during the summer, prime time, or it'd be 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be 5.30. That's the first time, 6.30, so a half hour before. Yeah, it's usually 6. 6 at Bass River. Yeah. Bass River 6. Bass River 6. That's what Bass River 6. 6.30 at Bay Bridge. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Six o'clock. I can live with that. Six o'clock on Wednesdays, first tea time. You'd be done by nine. done by nine, as far as your groups go. We're done long before nine. No, no. I mean, the last the last That's group would be going on before nine. Yeah. Well, it depends on how many we get. I don't think we're going to get uh, seventy-two players anymore. Like I said, a lot of people are leaving for health reasons, whatever. But yeah, if we had 72, which we did not have all last year. Do, do you need a committed number? Well, actually we increased your times because you always used to have 15 right. tea times and you had so many guys, we increased three tea times right. for you. But if you're losing guys due to health reasons, then we'll just go back to the 15 tea times that it has been for the last umpteen years. So no, we'll that's put, why it, we'll the put it in at the 50. That's why they're called the 60s. So it's 15 tea times times four. We'll put it in at the 15 and you'll oh, need to just. Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> discuss. That. Yeah, discuss yeah. like with operations. I thought it was an age thing. Bill, did you hear that? Not quite, but you said 15 tea times. 15 times. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dennis and Becky can handle this a little further. If they, they get, it's not, you're not requesting a time, you're getting a time. From three days out, it is a time. There's no request. You go in, you book it, it's yours. And you have the whole P sheet available as opposed to before when you only saw half. You see the entire so, P sheet at three days out. Okay. So three days before, two days for weekend. Two days on weekend. Two days on weekend. Two days on weekend. So Thursday, we'll be able to make a, Saturday. a viewing of what's left. You'll be able to see time. the entire T sheet if you go in at 7 p.m. when the booking opens. But that's, that's your booking. It's not a request. That's if you go in and select, say, 9 o'clock, that's your tea time. It's but not it's, a request. It's your actual tea time. But it is what you said. It's what's available. Right. But yeah, that's how it's available. But that yeah, has not available. So changed. The non members get to make tea times a year in advance to right. whatever they want. And when that, the members that, get what's left over, I could be wrong, but I, that, that has been the case. It anyway. has always been the, the case. case. That, that has never changed. We've actually increased the time for you guys to get a tea time and gave you the entire sheet available. You um, should, I think, and my name is Tom Tebow, by the way. Yeah. I think you should increase the time for members. I mean, when I moved to this town, I looked at Dennis and I looked at Yarmouth, Mass. And I picked to move to Yarmouth because of the golf. Not because of anything else. Not because of the school systems. I pay big tax money in the Yamath. I'll tell you right now, I have no children. We don't use the school system. We use the fire department, the police department, and I use the golf course. And I got shelled four times last year on the weekend for tea times. Four times. I didn't get that many. Well, I'm just telling <laughs> I you, I think that this, this course shouldn't be in the business of making money. This should be a benefit for we don't the people. That don't, well, 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 I'm not telling you. It's it, it just, it's just, it should be for the benefit of the people that live here. I mean, it, it brings in people. It brings people in from to visit, to play golf courses, to play these great golf courses. You know, it just seems that the members aren't being treated fairly. Like, I, I agree with Tim. Oh, you can make it tea time two, three weeks in advance if you if you're paying, and that shuts me out, and so I can't play on a weekend. I don't get it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Just to give you some, I mean, I agree with you because. I personally don't get tea times on the weekends either. I can't, I can't get them. But at the same time, the town has set this whole program up as an enterprise fund where they have to break even or make money or pay for, and pay for capital gains as you go down the road. That's the way they establish this. So that's what their challenge is How from an operations perspective. Or can it be changed? That's that's a that would have to be changed through the selectmen and probably meeting. A, a town meeting and a vote. So that's that's so I'm, 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 I'm just pretty, being honest. I'm not up on the whole thing, so and I apologize if I, I'm just a little no, nervous okay. speaking, so that's why I'm kind of okay. yelling a little bit. So no, oh, if you come in the shop, I'll explain exactly how it works. Yeah. It, yeah. And it makes it much. Are you trying to explain it to me one day? It, it, go, it goes back to when when Bayberry was built, right. right? And they took the money when they took the land to build Bayberry at the town meeting where they did that. Now, I wasn't there. This is what I heard at the town meeting when they created the Enterprise Fund. He's a historian, by the way. Okay. Um, the town adopted the policy that golf would be provided at a reasonable price based on the money raised from daily fees. And that's the town's policy. That means golf gets no money from the general fund. It never did once they adopted that, all right? It has to break even or make a profit. And, a, a, and a profit is not the right word not, yeah. because the money has to be put aside to be used for the capital improvements of the golf courses. Of the golf the golf courses. courses. Remember, Only every 20 golf. years, you have to get a new irrigation oh, system, and they cost a couple of million dollars. GPSs. Roofs that leak. You know, the, 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 we, we have to pay for the changes. I just feel that maybe the town should have the responsibility. I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. I, we, don't, <laughs> we don't disagree with you. Yeah. So why doesn't does this committee put its energy towards that? Because that's not our job. Hold on. Oh, hold our on. job under our our job under the, uh, the when they set up the enterprise fund 
this committee was has no authority for anything anyway. All right, all we are supposed to be able to do is to advise the select board on matters related to golf. And we have advised them that we disagree with that policy. I was hoping there was a power. But they, <laughs> but they haven't made any changes in the policy. And of course, there are a lot of people who live in town who don't play golf. And if yeah. you turned around and said that the town was going to spend their tax money they go nuts. to make improvements to the golf courses, some of them would not be happy. And I, bet you, I bet you there's a lot of people in town that don't use the school system. Too. Well, I, I agree different... with you there, too. I, you know? I mean, I so understand it's, that's the way it's it works. Different... I don't play pickleball either, and you spend money to build pickleball yeah, yeah, yeah. courses. You made a call, I just made another No, I, no I, we, we understand. Dennis, Dennis. 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 I can speak to it because I used to, I was the director of golf at Cranberry Valley. I know that for a long time. The budget for the golf course was part of the general town budget, which was paid by tax revenue. Enterprise account, everything you pay for is on your own. You don't get any tax money thrown into the golf course to help you pay for your bills, your capital projects, et cetera. Everything we pay for, we have to make our own money here. So being that I was at a different situation before, it was much easier and it was much easier to allocate more tea times to the people that, that were playing there because it wasn't, you, you didn't have to make your own money or lose it. And if you remember a few years ago, when they did the project at uh, Bayberry, did the renovation work, they came up $300,000 short because the revenue dropped. The town then went out and almost leased the golf courses out. And then everybody that's a member currently would have been paying three times more would have had no tea times and right. would have lost everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the dance that we have to do currently to try to get through and this just, with a lot of projects. If you've seen some of the meetings, there's a lot of things capital-wise we have yeah. to do in the next few years. So that that's what you, so that's basically just frustration. Yeah, and just yeah. just as a give you, give you a sense of, of scope too, it's it's almost like two-thirds of the income that we get within the golf courses comes from those daily fees. Right. So that we, Fortunately, they play probably half the rounds in a year. Now they probably play mostly in the summer, but they still, those fees during the summer pay for two thirds of our expenses, which is a lot. Um, we can't afford to lose those either. And mm -hmm. we try to balance what we ask for from the members, but also, or what, what they need from the members, but also what we get from daily fees. It's, it's, oh, so, it's a tight so It's a, Dan, Dennis is weird. Was great it's a dance that we're playing yeah. right sure so to Ed peter's point we had to go into a new system we thought what can be done to protect the sheet in a way but help some our membership try to book some times so we, we decided to open it up sooner and give you the entire sheet available there are no requests there are no points there's no yeah, nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it sounds it. like it's better it is, and the, it, beauty, the, the beauty of it, well, excuse me, the beauty of it is you would put in a request a week in advance for Saturday know. morning, right. and it wouldn't know until Thursday you have company coming, and you're like, oh, and you got nothing. Right. Or you got three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, or you, or you well, got three o'clock. You know, but you had that well, window, the hour, you had the hour before the hour later, and sometimes you didn't get that hour before, so you got nothing. If you requested eight, and there was nothing from yeah. seven to eight or eight to nine, you didn't get a time. Now you have the opportunity to go on the T-sheet, Cruise through, see every single time that's available. Oh, nine ten, I like that. Click, boom, it's yours. No and, it's, and no, one, no more like getting thing, shut out. One other like thing that we'll continue to do as long as it's, you know, we're we're staying the course and we're we're continuing to float the operation. Last year after COVID, we decided to give the white course entirely to members. Yeah. Now that's the plan again this year, and that worked out a lot with giving more times. Mm -hmm. So we are doing everything we can to get everybody out, to get them out as quick as possible, when they want to play as much as possible. And, and There's also very ample tea times. So when people say they can't get a tea time, it's, it's strictly not true. You may not get the time you want. There is tea times available. So right. there, there needs to be careful on the words because yeah. we are doing everything we can. The morning is limited. We can't create more daylight in the morning. <laughs> but... We do everything we possibly can to get members out. Plus, the other thing that I've heard a bunch tonight um, or this afternoon 
is that a lot of people can play after 10 o'clock in the morning, which to me, if you look at it from the outside, makes really, yeah, and a lot of the groups too, I mean, a lot of the people are retired. And just, I don't see any reason that you couldn't play later in the day either, but we're still accommodating it. So, you know, saying, oh, I can't play after eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning to, to the person outside of the groups makes you go, what, you know? So that's something you have to take into account too, because we hear from a lot of people that don't play in groups about not being able to play either right. also. Right. So. But so so another move that we helped to get more times is is moving that Sunday league first thing, which is similar to what we want to do 11, that gets you more access to the T sheet. So these are all things that get you more access, not less. Okay. Not not taken away. Because now from seven o'clock on Sunday, the whole T sheet's filled. There's no league, there's no nothing. There's it's just open golf. Well, Scott, I, I apologize, and I apologize to too if I came off wrong. No, no, it's okay. Just, you know, I just for me. You know, no, it, it's it good for people. Right. It's, it's okay. It's good for people to come to the yeah. meetings so that they understand the entire situation of golf and what the balancing act is that must be done. Sure. Uh, I've worked in golf courses in uh, Korea. I've worked in golf courses in, in North Carolina. And Members, um, and they put more allocation towards members than non-members. Of course, it's a military course that I'm talking about, about a municipal course, but yeah. to work 55, 50 hours a week, five days a week, and not be able to get into the system until 5, 30, 6 o'clock at night for a weekend and be told, Oh, just go as a single. Don't expect to play with your friends. That, that to me, is just like a slap in the face because the non-members that come in from out of town, they get to play with their friends whenever they want to when they come down. Except it costs them a lot more. <laughs> mm. That's true. It costs them for, for that day that they come down. Right. Correct. It does. But and that's but that's a, that's what we have to Dance yeah, that's where we get the, the money that keeps the golf courses running. If they were, if they had gone and privatized the courses and brought in, you know, a private company, they don't want a heck of a lot more than twelve hundred dollars a year for a membership for a pass. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that we have pretty well exhausted this topic. I've got a couple the... of questions on the league stuff for our group. Okay, real quick. Okay. okay. Um, the issue about, I think in the, in the lead directions, it said something about you have to eat in the, if we have an outing, a shotgun, we have to eat in the restaurant. I think it's only the case. What if we choose not to eat in the Do we still get the shotgun? Let us work on think the about other that. restaurant. I, we went we through this. We, the thing about the restaurant is, if if we have, you know, a shotgun go out there at five in the morning or whatever it is, say six, and you guys are all out there, and we're limited on their business side, it's it's not a, you know, we have to kind of another dance. But I'll let that explain. A well, bit. basically, it comes to this: if you have a shotgun and you don't spend any money in the restaurant, nobody ever goes in there. They have no right as a business to even be open because nobody's coming in. We, so uh, that basically is a, a net loss day for them. Yeah. So one of the things we're trying to do is meet with them to try to make it so we can possibly talk about them doing something to help the membership to play in these events, to maybe start working on some sort of deal to try to foster. We're try to entice them to get well, well, deal. Bill, Bill certainly tried to do that with them last year. And of course, last year was their first year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before but, that, he'd work with uh, Kendra whoever it was. Heather. Heather, Kendra. Heather. Uh, and, and they always provided a decent luncheon. Well, I think it's going to be incumbent on us to meet with them. Yeah, let's try to let us handle stuff. Yeah, that. and that's fine. I'm just yeah. trying to give you, I mean, you know the history, but yeah. uh, last year, you know, they were trying to charge us $18.50 a person for a lunch. And what they were putting out there wasn't that good. So that's why we stopped 
and no. just said, guys, you're on your own for lunch. We understand. Yeah. And we finish. Yeah. That's yeah. one of those things yeah. we need to work out with them, and we'll relay okay. the message when you got something. The other, that the we other can issue. With you. The other issue was when we did field days, we paid in cash. We paid prizes in cash, and he was telling us we can't do that. I'm what I'm telling you, you you can't do. You have to pay the four dollars to us. Okay. You we we did not do that you. on those days. But you have to still pay. You. So there's the fee pay for the well, $4. I understand you have a fee, but then when, when we had the field days, we didn't pay the $4 thing. We paid everything. All our prizes were in cash. Um, and that was what? In lieu of carts? No, we, we would what pay. The what was the agreement there? Everybody paid. Everybody the all paid for it. Check and usually we paid for it. The league paid for yeah. the carts. Yeah. Uh, everybody had to take a cart. Um, the thing with um, the four dollar fee, if we have to pay that, we can work around that. We just maybe not pay out quite as much in cash. But the guys like to, they won't stick around to eat unless they're waiting for us to tell them who won the money. <laughs> and that's a fact. Um, there was an issue last year back and forth, back and forth about you can't pay it, it's against golf rules or whatever. I think they changed that for amateur status as far as well, paying cash prizes. That's, that's neither here or there. It doesn't really matter what they change for amateur status. What we're saying as a rule. Okay. If it's it's more of a we or a we're, we're saying it's for us to operate accordingly. And the best way forward through what we've gone through mass golf is we want to continue to do everything in pro shop merchandise, getting cash involved, getting payouts, as you say, that's cumbersome for us and problematic. Well, no, we're not asking you to do. No, that. I don't understand that. Okay. But, so we're saying, yeah, four dollars. Now, if you're, if they're saying that the uh, carts were paid for in, in lieu of that, I'll let Dennis and maybe Bill or, or Becky figure that out. Okay. Their own on that one. Okay. okay. But in the grand scheme of what we're trying to figure out here, the the whole underlying issue is we need to figure out a deal with a restaurant and a deal with everything else to make that day successful for all involved. Right. You know. So if if you're going out there and the four dollars is a trade off for us to give you the time, and then you get it back in the pro shop merchandise. So we provided the time. That's where the four dollar comes in. So, what, like I said, they they can handle that on their end when we work this out. But my idea is to work with the restaurant to get something that's affordable to you guys, so that we can make this all work right now. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. I guess I'm really easy and quick. Ethan, I'm not about golf. Um, yeah. Saturdays when at Bayberry, you get there bright and early, six o'clock, six thirty in the morning. There's only one bathroom open. I understand the concession has a key, and <laughs> nobody else. But you got like 30, 40 guys out there. I gotta go to the bathroom. And it'd be nice if maybe one of the cart guys could, if, if they could open it, just for the the bathroom. Uh, le have legally, we can't open their building. Legal, okay. unless there was an emergency. We can't go in there and open the building up to have someone go in there if they're not there. Now we're gonna work with them to come on times, but legally we can't do that because okay. it's not in our control anymore. All right, I'm going to close this part of the item meeting. of the agenda and move on. <laughs> Topic number four. Thank you for yeah. your, your yeah, no, no, that, that's exactly what we're glad you came. Thank you. Okay. And don't be shy about staying on. <laughs> All right. Next is the presentation to the Board of Selectmen on the end of the month. March 29th. As current. So we are on the agenda. Do you want me to recap or you recap? Either way, <laughs> go for it. If you'd like first, and I'll put my two cents in now. All right. So uh, we are officially on the agenda for the 29th to go for um, requested the increase for the 5%. Um, Alan and I actually met extensively with Bill um, and discussed all the ongoing situations within the world of supply problem, the inflation, the fuel pricing out of control. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are aware, if not a lot of our business revolves around petroleum products, even down to the golf ball we sell. So we expect rising costs across the board. 
Um, so we're going to go for the fee increase to help combat writing costs. Um, on the flip side, we did turn on the memberships and we will honor any pricing that someone has already bought their membership. We will not tack on <laughs> if we do get the additional. So, um, but if we go forward and get that on the 29th, starting on the 30th, they will go up. Uh, do you feel that the answers that they had last time have been, you've got the answers to them, the capital plan? The uh, so plans. we're, we're going to completely discard <laughs> the capital plan. Um, I think this was hour four of the meeting before we finally yes. <laughs> agreed on something. But so there's there's many things going on here. The other side is it's in here too. Is we're gonna do a big time report to them in the fall after numerous consulting were done to ex explain pretty much the dire situation we are in. Um, the deferred capital. Deferred capital, right. correct. So, like, we have we have Collins Center coming in; they're going to help do that. Right. We have National Golf helping us. We have building um, assessment. A building assessment. Um, I mean, we went out to bid for the siding and the windows and trim, and that was like insanely cost, and we don't have that. So, we're going to do a complete building assessment in all six buildings on the golf courses, and we'll get that report and then bring that to them as long with the Collins. Um, and and the actually, we're going to do a USGA report. They're coming on April 7th to, okay. um, and I'll send you guys all the notice to go over the links, favor and bad server. They're going to do a report on every course to help solidify all the problems we have there. So all these reports are going to be our ammunition, if you will, to help solidify the points of why we need to do all this work. Next fall. Next for next fall, I think the important but, thing so, is to say is when we go to them at this point, we are not asking for at this point an increase of the fees for to go to capital improvements. The increase for this year will be only inflation. for the inflation that has been caused by the problem with gas and oil. Okay. And then and so and we actually have, yes, and labor. And we have actually taken off some of the pressure for to get the links capital improvement plan going right away because the wastewater thing has backed off. So it's not like, I mean, we, yes, we have to get it done, but it's not like we were trying to get it done yes, last year. So what, yeah. what we're doing is ready. we're just taking a step back. We're, we're yes. take a step back. We're going we're gonna to go and say, hey, we got this. We got the war in Ukraine, which is shot fuel through the roof. Doesn't look like it's going to come down anytime soon. That's driving our costs like this. And we got inflation on top of that, and supply problem on top of that. So we're going there to hopefully get them to sign up on the fee there. Then we're going to come back in October after we did all these reports and say, here's what we're telling you. This, this 5% is something that we need to do every single year because of all these things that we have. And if we don't do one, well, here's something you can check off as we can't do this. We can't do this. We can't do this. But the whole point is to hopefully understand like this is a situation we are in and we need to do all this to get on the right foot. So do you think they're just going to forget about last time when capital is a big issue? This is coming from Bill and Tom. This is what do, Bill so. is saying. Cool. Now we are also going prepping? for the, the cart fee. All right. The cart fee. Yeah, so I would. So we we were originally talking about oh, yeah, said, the afternoon. The, the afternoon. So we were originally going to do. So this came yeah, out in like like hour four of this meeting, but we were originally <laughs> going to go and talk to them about, hey, this is you know we're tabling the fee, we're going to do this, but when we got further in talking, I said I would like at least go over there and and raise the cart fee because it's strictly gas related, you know, and then hopefully get the twilight fee because it's not a new fee, and then we got to talk further. I'm like, well, this is all due to inflation supply and, and gas. So Bill is on understanding the same thing that we want to go and explain our situation and, and hopefully they understand. They may not and they may say no and we move forward like we were planning on anyways. Okay. But the whole point right now is one memberships are on sale. Go buy it now unless you want to pay more April 1st right. it does go through. But there is a chance that this goes through and, and then we can raise the fees. You know? I guess my question is more like I think generally we had talked about before the twilight fee is like the first thing, the most important thing to try to get. I thought 
and we and are just, going I just to didn't want, too. I just didn't want to risk that, you know what I mean? If is that do you feel you're gonna risk that? No. Can you I, fall I back think, and just get that? You know what I mean? They can do yes, they, they, they can do. do anything they want. I know. <laughs> but I'm but do you you're talking about the selectmen I mean? Yes. Yeah, 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 they can they can literally go line item by line on that. They could say no, yes, no, yes. I no, think yes. the biggest or take because we almost this, got that we almost got the yes, twilight. And I last. think the discussion about the twilight fee is their fear that it's going to take from full right. membership. Right. Um, I did have a discussion with a board of select member and tried to convince him that we didn't feel that would happen this way. Do you think the twilight uh, fee is getting lost in the other? No. Okay, that's I what I was worried about. Yeah, I, I, I think, so the I think it's a tendency yes. to. Yes, I mean this year it's going to be. Maybe hard. you should go for the twilight fee by itself and forget about the rest. No, it's it's no, three line items we're going for. Rest. We're going for the five percent on the membership, yeah, so it's, it's, the card fees, and the twilight fee. So it's really going to be hard to tell this year on the twilight, the twilight fee if we yeah. do get it because I'm guessing ninety percent of the members are going to sign up before this goes through. Correct. Yeah. So I think. Um, we generally don't let people go the other way. We let them go up. Like there are right. links, we let you go up. So that's something we're probably not going to continue to do as well because it's not really good for us. But we'll let you go up. Um, so this year would be really hard to unless we get an influx right after it that people are waiting for that. So I think we'll pick up some of the people that are joining more than one club because oh, they can't. Right. And that's yeah, a, that's why like you could do that too. But I, I, I don't think you get merchants in this yeah. town that say they go to Booster to play golf because they have a Twilight League. Yeah. Because they work all day and can play at three o'clock. I in guess the that's afternoon. what I was getting at. Right. We have the open no, it will be hard to get a proper assessment of what's going on in this town until the next season. And we'll you know what? Right. And we can always try it out for one year. They can vote it in. We try it out. It doesn't work. We get rid of it. I was, I'm just hoping we won't lose everything. That's what I'm saying. I, I would hate to lose a well, twilight fee because of the you know, Well, if you come one of the effects of the twilight yeah. league too is that people Sorry. who have a full membership and may decide that playing in the afternoon is more advantageous because right. it costs less, and that takes some of the pressure, pressure off, off the morning. times in the morning. Right, right. So you're sort of doing a little bit of a trade-off, possibly. You might lose. Totally, a few uh, full-time, full yeah. you know, annual passes. But when you do that, you're taking the pressure off the morning and exactly. uh, leaving more tea time children. So there, there's a couple of reasons and for increasing the usage for all the open tea times. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just well, you got to wait and see what happens, and hopefully we can get it through on the 29th. And all right. Yeah. See what occurs. I think we I can just say we'd like to try it for the year and see how it goes. So well, that, yeah, that's the plan. We're going to go and see what we can do. But it is on the 29th. Um, and then, but we didn't want to wait till the 29th and try to process. You know, so, <laughs> oh my god, no, I don't. I, I they are don't. currently on sale. If you haven't got it, go get it, please. And uh, get it processed right away. Wait. That's what's happening there. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll be getting something to you guys probably by the end of the week or something that's going to look like what we're going to present to them, and then you guys can go over it. And, um, there, I need to get something to them by the point. You send it to us, yeah. all right, for us to give you feedback. Mm -hmm. I worry, you know, this is a joint meeting presentation. Between as long as it's you it's, can respond to Scott and right. myself, and I respond to not respond the group. Right, okay. Rules. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yes, I'm trying to stay on the right side is not here. <laughs> all okay. right, then I guess we'll do the reference report. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I hope everybody got the email blast. We ran into a few issues. Got I got it. it. I, I got, got it. it. <laughs> First time. Our new months. website is golfguard.com. Yes. Do you know what you go? You yeah, go yeah. Go I got it. We are very aware, Ted. That's why our new website is golfguard.com. It's funny because that's what I was using last year, and I would always get to the site, and it wasn't a problem. So, but. golfgarment.com. Um, 
if you got the notice, that's great. We'll send another one out in a couple of days. Just keep reminding people. And by the way, I did hear from several people that this is the first time they've gotten a newsletter. So going through Club Profit to sign up or whatever currently is excellent working. Please, if they don't get it, if they're, you're hearing people, please forward to yep. these guys mm -hmm. and we'll see if we can get it to go. Um, Do we have um, uh, people like the Chamber of Commerce or other places which have entered our links where we uh, reached out to them? Yes. yes. Good. I met with Mary at the Chamber today. She will take care of hers. Thank you. was with Patty at Cape Cod over the weekend. I've been in the, they the hotels. Any, anywhere we think the links exist, we have changed. <clears throat> so we are <laughs> moving forward as quick as possible. And, um, but, and did the newsletter go out to the Board of Selectmen? They would have received it okay. if they can all forward it to them. Um, <clears throat> but yes, keep telling your friends, golfyarmouth.com. Anything else is not associated with us. Okay, Ted, go there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so as you wear uh Bass River is open. Um tentatively Bayberry will be opening March 25th. Keep put that in your calendars. We will assess it as we keep going. We'll send a notice that we'll be positive that it can open that day. But just giving you guys a heads up first. March 25th is weekends only. Weekends only, first two weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We usually go full throttle starting Masters Week. Um, which is April 7th, I think. Yep. Um, we've done this the last couple of years. It worked out pretty well that way. Um, and I already touched on everything else pretty much. I hit on this, the building assessment, that's going to be every building. Um, one of the things that will probably be in there if we haven't already done it is the maintenance facility, which is an article at this time meeting. That's a safety item. Most of the garage doors are falling off there rails and they've already been repaired twice and they're no longer being able to be repaired. We want brand new doors at this time. So. Scott, did, I know you, you had some things in for the summer that were going to be done. What you said before, we're not going to be able to do it because the costs were too high. Yeah, so we had an article at fall time meeting. We went out to bid right. for the, the rest of the clubhouse and it mm -hmm. came in extremely high. Um, we didn't have enough money to cover it Okay, through the, through the article. So we're one, going through a building assessment with an architect to better word a couple of things to see if that was the case and to get a proper assessment on all buildings so that they can help us write these mm -hmm. bids that need to go out. <coughs> very accurate what we're asking for and make sure the price is accurate. So, okay. Um, so it's going to take another shot at it. Right. Maybe uh, this fall when things mm -hmm. come down a little bit, it might be more. Well, I can tell you, just <laughs> I, I just, we're putting a little sunroom on the house and yeah. it told us that the costs are going up five thousand dollars just for the lumber right so it's nuts as far as prices are going. yeah it's a little crazy right now so hopefully things settle down after the building assessment comes out we can use their information and have an architect um, one of the things that barnes has they have an architect that works for the town that can do a lot of this stuff where we don't have that it's uh the bid went out with a combination of myself procurement a little bit of the building um Department, but it's like uh, none of us. Well, they know more than I do. I don't know a lot about buildings, so it's not my forte. It's, yeah. But um, so yeah, we're, the assessment will really help us get going the right way. So we won't be doing that this year. For like it sounds like this. It would have been too late anyways at this point. We yeah. can't do anything in the season, so yeah. we're better off waiting for this to come out. Okay, going back to town meeting. We they suggest we need more money to up the article. So uh, the art. Uh, the beauty of that, the article exists for at least two years. So we have the $100,000 to it for the next two years. Okay. So if it comes in saying we need $175,000 more, we just yeah, have to go that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, why is there a Bass River this. Grill in there? Sorry about that. That's Bay. Bay Bay. Yeah, that's, no one wanted to correct me. Come on. Um, <laughs> I noticed it. But. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bayberry is undergoing an extensive renovation that became extensive when we found some more issues. But uh, <laughs> we had to redo the floor to the Board of Health. Um, this is under our peer view, not the restaurants, um, being the landlord and everything. So the floor is actually getting ripped out tomorrow and being replaced over the next week. 
Um, while we're doing all that, we repainted in there and we're going to move the bar a little further out to where the poles are in there, if you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah. So it's going to create some more space for the restaurant to have and function better when we're done. So I'll go there until we're done because it looks like an absolute mess right now. But well, it'll look good when it's all done. Um, that's starting to come around with the floor going in this week. And then once the floor's in, we really had no choice but to destroy the bar because I don't know how the heck we would have got all that equipment out of the way for the floor. So everything's in the actual restaurant floor right now. Well, while, while they do the floor and we'll put everything back. And was it the floor in the kitchen you had in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. They wouldn't sign off on opening the restaurant again unless we replace the floor. Oh, <laughs> this is actually going on for a couple of years, and I've gotten lucky to talk them into let us open. So. Oh. Okay. It's pretty bad in there, actually. Once you pull all the equipment out, you can see how bad it really was in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get that out and get a new one in, put everything back. So and it'll have, look a lot better when it's done. And have you already started any of the discussions with the um, Shea Hospitality for some of the changes? Yeah, we've had some basic conversations. I know Dennis has talked to Haley a little bit. Um, my talkings with Haley is strictly on the uh, redo of the restaurant right now. I know he's had some basic conversations with her, and she's going to be coming around a lot more now as they gear up to open as well. So we can have a lot of these conversations with them. What's their start date? Uh, they have to be, uh, well, technically, their piece is April. So it's April 1st. I think it's April 15th, actually. But For both. They, they generally will open both of them. Open, so. Yeah. So Bay Mary and well, if we're open, open, I think they're going to at least be around the weekends, I'm sure. Right. Okay. Should we invite Haley or somebody to another GEC meeting? To yeah, it, maybe uh, April would be a good one to invite her to. We can have her come in and give you a quick update what's going on there. Um, but we haven't, uh, because we're doing all the renovations, just kind of talk there. So I'll let her know that you guys want to see her. Yeah. I'm sure Mark will be a part of it too. We'll let you know when that's uh, done. We'll send some nice pictures out and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, as far as course conditions, you may have seen a lot of lumber in the parking lot at Bayberry. We've been very busy with tree work. These storms can stop anytime now. Um, <laughs> we are going to start doing some mowing actually within the next two weeks if everything continues to go the right way. And we'll get going on getting ready for spring here. I took out a couple of my alignment trees. No, we didn't. <laughs> Mother and Nature Bass, did. And Bass River. There were a lot of, yeah, we played the other day. And I'm like, what the, the one behind the green, The one behind the green and the sixth hole from Bass River. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my alignment doing tree. quite extensive damage to that green. And it was also not a very healthy tree, so we took it down. Okay. Just when we do take trees down, they're, they're There's usually reasons. Yeah. <laughs> problems associated with the tree. Um, I don't know if anyone's been out to the 15 at Bayer. We did some extensive work in the, yeah. the waste area to yeah. change that out. It looks a lot better. How about the 15th on uh, Bass River? Yeah, the two new T boxes. We haven't quite gotten there yet. That's something we can tackle during the springtime. Um, sure. Is the intent to, you're going to move that, to shift left. it to the left? To the left. Um, so getting more to the right, having towards the woods. Is that why those trees the, went down? Right. Well, no, the left. Yeah. Yeah, how can you go to the left? You have yeah. to go to the right. You're going more to the, to the right. right. You're aiming right. No, we're going to shift the T's to the left. Shift the T's to the left. left. So, so that you're, you're going to aim right. more to the right. You right. So away from the home. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. We're going to aim yeah. you right. You're going to be, the T box is going to be going here. That's my nemesis. Is it is the intent to shift little, the fairway a little bit that the way? The intent is uh, for the two T boxes going to go. There's actually some yeah. <laughs> couple limbs that overhang. The intent is if you get that left, it's a very, very bad golf shot. Yeah. And oh, yeah. We want to avoid it going left at all costs. <laughs> so we want to push the right center and come in that way, which is a good way to come in. I go that way anyway by slice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that type of work is actually kind of a lot better for us when the ground's um, not frozen. We got to do some irrigation to that area. We'll bring in the dirt and okay. we'll sod it when we get some sod. So um, that is called the Net company today, you can touch on that. Sure, it's not in here. Just uh, um, the nets that are on uh, 
in between oh, yeah. the R3 and the uh, T box is a guy coming, a uh, net company from Rhode Island to give us a quote on putting it back up and doing it properly. Um, <laughs> uh, from Rhode Island, uh, the company is coming to take a look on Thursday. So, and then we might do some work on the um, the net on the same hole 15, 15. Um, to help. Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. the one that's up there is far. So, see so if we can have them go out there and do that too, and then the area around where the carts are being put to protect that. So, they can come to us and So, and that's what it's a company that does this all over the country. So, we'll see what it comes in at. <laughs> Good news is the polls are already up. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just, just, just adding in this time. Just adding in. How, how, how about the, uh, I know you're concerned about the irrigation at Bass River. I mean, just got to try to plug through, literally plug through another year. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens when we fire back, fire on back up. in a few weeks. Uh, it's interesting where that sinkhole was, where it's actually a, an irrigation line. That, I'm sure you're aware of the sinkhole at Grass River that caved in. There was an irrigation running through that. We had no idea if it was ever attached or not. And it's possible that water has been oh. leaking out of there for a long time. So. That may help the yeah. situation <laughs> now that we're <laughs> attached back up. So uh, we'll see what happens on that scenario. But fire it up slowly. <laughs> but it's only just uh, the things that are failing out there will still continue to fail. It's all blue joints. They're all past their limit of time. So it sticks as it happens. Right. And there's yep. nothing we can do. It's it's yeah. repair it. Try to use as little glue as possible and move on. It's it's just. 20 years later, and that's what happens with glue. A lot of the new systems, they avoid glue at all costs. It's all fell in stuff that it's gasket. So and the, the new wastewater plan has it in, in second in phase four, as far as uh, the possibility of bass river. Yeah. Yeah. That's that where it's, you know, once we get through this couple of consultant reports and everything, which we do know call out that it's mutually beneficial for everyone. We need to go and state our case there and we want to go quicker. But wastewater is definitely the best way for all parties. Agreed. Yeah. Just 20 years from now is not probably good right. time. Right. Not, no. not for us. No. <laughs> not beneficial for all parties in that scenario either. Yeah. It's just going to drive up the cost. Right. At that point, your costs are going to be astronomical. Right. So, okay. um, like I said, newsletter went out. Um, I pretty much touched all this future um, stuff I have in here. Those are just all the reports we're going to do. Question on newsletter. You would talk usually. You do a end of, a season opening newsletter, which was yeah. like two weeks away. We'll get another one out. Um, that one's more coming from me directly. We'll get that out with what's happening, what's occurring. Yeah, because I mean, you have a lot of that. I usually don't put that in until we actually have a firm date on Bayberry. I don't want to put it out until okay. I know we can actually open on the twenty fifth. Yeah. Well, it'd be good also to have a quote if we get the increase in the fees well that would be a separate email we'll send out on the 30th or whatever if we do get it we'll send out that this went right, through after the open um that's that'd be also good to tell people about the twilight right yeah. have to we'll let people around. know yeah for sure yeah and then financials and huh? if bayberry is done and the inside the inside it'd be good to send out a few pictures of things for oh yeah absolutely We're, we'll definitely send that out as soon as it's ready to go your retained earnings at work. Hell yeah. Um, and then uh, financials, I attached uh, the meters report through February. Um, we are behind from COVID. Obviously, uh, it's kind of hard to keep pace there, but still we look very good there. Revenues are up prior to COVID, $785,000. So Richard probably did some analysis for you. To show that we're doing pretty well still. Yeah. yeah so um, I also also look at it in comparison to what other towns are doing, because that gives you a sense of whether it's us or the market, and it's definitely just the market. So greens fees year to date are running eighty eight percent, which is about what everybody else is running. So uh, in part because last year we had those very mild winters, which generated some additional greens fees. So we didn't have that this year. So things have started to slip a little bit more. Uh, cart rentals also slipped a little bit more than I thought. So we're down to, I think it's 80, it's about 80% of last year. 
I'm not quite sure why that is. I mean, uh, I think everybody liked having a single rider cart, and we took that away. Okay. We just started walking. We started walking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. So that's the other thing. And obviously, the big, the big piece of this right now is memberships. Right. Um, yeah. What you're, what you like to do, and I'm going to be looking at two things. One is the renewal rate. So in prior years, uh, by March, you would want to be at about a 63% renewal rate. I think we're not going to hit that just because of the late start. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's where I that's where you'd like to be. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to try to get into the high 80s for the by the end of June for renewals. That's just for renewals. And then you've got to take a look at the second piece of that, which is the number of news. Um, again, you want to try to get at least as many news uh, to offset your losses from, uh, right. from people not renewing. Although, again, I'm hoping that we have, I'm, I would be expecting a slight increase because, again, as we've, uh, people have been alluding to, we're hearing that people are joining multiple courses. Uh, so as a way of, uh, and a, this guy right here, my perfect uh, example, joining uh, like an afternoon, like a, a booster, uh, joining that afternoon league as a, a way to get in some additional affordable golf. So, yeah, so we turned them on Friday. Uh, I don't know what's it look like since Friday. I'd say we probably get about 50 in house and then online. They had to be. So I'd say we probably did at least 100 since we turned it on. Yeah, it was in the newsletter too, which yeah. was good. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of people have been Yeah. But what, where we'd like to get, and this is for, by the way, those are all for adults. You have to sort of the the category the, the two categories that are really different are adult renewal rates versus uh, uh, youth uh, student renewal rates. So student renewal rates typically are only twenty percent by the end of March, and maybe sixty percent by the end of the fiscal year. And again, some of that is they just age out. You know, so yeah. they move, they do whatever, um, and they and they and. The trend is they don't get replaced as much, as often. Um, so, so our, our trend is actually we've grown membership over the last three years. So we can just see what happens this year. I am I am optimistic that it's going to continue to grow. Uh, the best our best category, by the way, in terms of yield, is our young adult category. Uh, they pay a even though they pay a little bit less, they're Rounds played on average is so modest that they pay the highest average fees of anybody. Which one? The young adult, um, the twenty, the under, the under thirties. Yeah, and those are the ones that everybody claims are taking all the tea time. Uh, the data doesn't show that. But they take. I mean, yeah, the thing is, I understand that the tea times they take are probably the ones that people are concerned about. Like yeah. weekend and they the don't mind playing the afternoon. They're okay with it. There yeah. they are. <laughs> they don't get out of bed on the weekends yes. until nine o'clock right. in the morning anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're happy to get them. Right. Yeah. So I think those are those are what I would be looking at. Again, I think you know the big the big challenge uh, and the big question right now is going to be staffing. Uh, on one hand, you could say it's good news because we're running well below. Our expense level is on staffing, <laughs> but um, I think it's partially we need to get our staff yeah, on that's board. A, that's just not sustainable. But no, you can't do that. Um, um, we finally got the uh, permissions to rehire some positions that went through on Friday. They are advertised now. We're internally or externally? Internally. Um, yeah, you had, a web, you had it in a newsletter too. Referencing that was just asking seasonals. for seasonals. Seasonals. Yeah. Oh, this is full this time. is for full time. Full time. Yeah. Um, okay. So we will be doing uh, an indeed ad tomorrow for some more seasons to see what we can drag out there to get more traction to get see we can get some more people come through the door. I think operationally as these guys are doing pretty well with hires, maintenance yeah. we continue to struggle. Yeah. To get help, we got a lot more this year, which is great. Um, but. We we're so far understaffed last year. We're still so far understaffed. So hopefully we get some more traction. We get people to do yeah. some more for us. 
Um, but that's all we can do. We can only hope at this point and just advertise and advertise and hopefully get some candidates. Do we have any luck contacting the high schools? So the high school is interesting because uh, a lot of those guys want to do landscaping and most of the landscapers yeah. have already got all the, the younger kids and, and go into landscapers usually pay well above what we pay and we can't usually compete with them. Um, they have the beauty of tacking that on to the customer. We cannot do that. We will keep that tech. And everybody, everybody's trying to tap into that. Yeah, I, I've reached out to them the last couple of years and and most of those guys are in the in the landscaping areas and and that's where we struggle is and I'm seeing landscapers advertising at twenty five dollars an hour to get the same people that we're looking for. Um, it's just tough for us to oh I can't pay someone that um, we we are set rates and then the only enticing thing is is hopefully we get some people that want to play golf and we entice them to golf. Yeah. I was gonna ask that you do, they can play. Yeah. 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 What so, after what time? There's no set time. It's after um, they finish working. <laughs> yeah, it's after they finish working. You have to work. Uh, we do it differently here. We don't have a set amount of hours you have to work. The only caveat is they need to clear it with a, a manager and make sure the time is available. Mm -hmm. So you can't go in there and book a time. It has to be available. You have to go talk to the pro shop, make sure it's available. As long as it's there, they can go out and play. Good. Okay. But if they want to participate in any events or leagues, they have to purchase a membership. Like right. Else, just okay. like else. Yeah. Uh, turf show. Uh, turf show. That was interesting. Um, found out that almost anything related to turf is going through the roof. Fertilizer, especially, especially since uh, with the war in Ukraine, Russia decided to ban urea. Yeah. Which is not good for it's fertilizer. It's fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> so. What, what's happening right now is most of the fertilizer that's already out there is spoken for. So luckily we had a bunch already in stock. It's a matter of what we can do to keep it from affecting us. So I'm working on a couple of sales reps to see if we can get another shipment before someone else takes it. So right. I think they're largest, expecting a lot of issues with fertilizer being able to. I think largest, is it Russia the largest company that you've used in the past to do the fertilizer? Me for uh, oh, aeration. aeration. Yeah, we do. We do all the fertilizer in house. Oh, okay. Aeration. Yeah. Russia is like the largest producer of, pot of uh, potash or something. Yeah. In the world. Okay. Okay. Yeah, in urea, so it's it's not a good situation for us, um, or any for us or anyone that needs fertilizer. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That would be like. Everybody. I would imagine even in your own orders supply, if you went home, you was starting to start going like this because there's just no way to. Yeah. I mean, this affects food supply. It affects everything. everything. Yep. Um, we had pre-purchased a lot of things. So if you've looked through our community, you can see uh, that category is way up. Mm -hmm. um, maintenance supplies is, is up almost $60,000. That was pre-purchasing a lot of our supplies in the first place. And we're going to look to do that again before July 1st to hopefully Get us going. The worst thing that could happen is we can't get it because someone else did that. So. <laughs> By the way, every every gallon, every dollar in gas prices that goes up probably costs us an extra fifty cents uh, per car per year. Another thing that the big companies have done, or not even the big companies, almost every fertilizer distributor or chemical distributor is now charging a fuel surcharge for your delivery. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. Things that you never expected that would happen now. So I was talking to a couple of people there saying every time the truck goes, they're losing three thousand dollars on the truck. They're not going to continue to lose money there in business too. So they're going to tack it to you. So the only thing we can do is hopefully someone is coming down this way with the delivery, and it's not so bad for us to get delivery. So we don't want to pay the whole thing, mm -hmm. but as long as we're coming to the gate, wherever it's coming from, hopefully we only pay a slight percentage of that. So. But it's a, it's a pretty dire situation, something that hasn't probably happened since 08, when the last kind of recession came to market or whatever. And that was kind of a whole different supply, but gas was way up at that time, too. But yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't look good on the fertilizer front. So we have enough to get us going through the spring and a little bit into the summer. But like I said, we're going to try to purchase it 
The other problem is I don't have anywhere to store it. So we got to get the first one out first. <laughs> and I thought Bill was going to check the DPW to see if it was. Yeah, so I actually fast. talked to a couple uh, fertilizer reps and they're willing to hold it until we need it. So oh, I'd rather better. do it that way. Better. Yeah. Um, then moving it twice. Yep. So as long as we make sure we have enough funding, we'll pull the trigger and get it. Okay. Anything on the other on the municipals? No, not on that. I was good. on that units, but I did want to talk about this too. Yeah, so I sent you guys a link in the policies and procedures. Obviously, yeah, that that's was an my ongoing answer. document that we continue to update <coughs> um, as we make changes. We're gonna have to change the lead thing in there as well. So yes, and thank you, Ted, for the awesome job you did in editing okay. policy and procedures. And the one you sent out today, um, whoever went in there and put the, put the things in the boxes and stuff like that, that, they did a really nice job. Yeah, I believe they can see we're working on that together to, to change it a little bit, but it, that was pretty good. And obviously we need to change a couple things now that you guys read so, yeah. yeah. The thing in that, <laughs> so that's an ever evolving document. It's not always gonna be set in stone. Things are changing. By the day sometimes so yeah that was a problem with it before when when you went in and you took it out of being a pdf yeah um the, the people who were writing it weren't well if you were using word they weren't using the features of the program they were doing it like it was a typewriter and putting in spaces so, instead of uh tabs, right. tabs and so yeah. so going forward is is so you got the document online now which yeah. is something you're agreeing to now that we made a change to lead policy we're going to put it in there in an amended sheet so every time we amend someone's going to say amended and then the date the date the only the only thing i found in the one you sent out today was in the thing about um the the tournaments they, they went back to using the word members instead of catapult I'll change that. Yeah, I'll change that. <laughs> Everywhere else it says pass holder. <laughs> okay. Um, there is one thing, uh, pass holder cart fees, uh, pass holder cart, it says requirements. I think it's just, I, I think it is a fee last time, not a requirement. For what? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, we can change that. Yeah. But I think the other question is the, the rate that was quoted on there was for a shared cart per person. Uh, you did not call out the private cart fee. We don't. Oh, yeah. So one single person. If, some, if yeah, somebody we'll says that, that they Let's put that in there, that they want a, a single rider car, it's at the maximum fee. And the only other asterisk might be, uh, and I think it may just wonder uh, the uh, the cart things. Uh, That's something that can be said. I mean, I know COVID is starting to go the other way, up, but if people do want a single rider car, it's not that we won't provide it. It's just at that fee. At, at that fire yeah. fee. And yeah. basically, we also have the dividers if someone's, you know, we've had these conversations, all three of us with people. We give them three options on how you want to go. You can walk with the divider, you can buy it yourself. So, 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 that, options. so that might also potentially be a topic under the cart, golf cart usage uh, as a topic. Okay. Um, and I think the, the last piece would be the solo rider. What are the requirements for solo rider? Pay for it. Well, no, no, solo rider, you typically don't pay for it, right? Because it's for severely handicapped people. And it typically is provided at the same. It, it's not a private cart. You just sort of you pay the standard. Well, that's a different, completely different. Animal. Completely different animal. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And so, and I, right. So, yeah. you know. So that's what I don't know if it belongs in this document. Well, that's something. If someone came in and talked to us, we would accommodate them. Right. So, right. So that not, was my point. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't think that had to be in the policy. Yeah. No. It doesn't have to be in the no, policy, that's, but it's that's an operation. It's yeah. an operation. Well, we could put in there, you know, the maximum fee. If yes, you're, if absolutely. You're so that's maximum. clarified in case there's some people still. Right. You know. And didn't you have something that you wanted added at the end or something? No, no. Okay. I did have I had a couple of other ideas, but not for this, not for the bigger group. Just small, small 
painting things. <laughs> okay, so it's still a work in process. It's, a, it's, it's always it's an always a, document. Yeah, it's but it's online. Be, it's online and good. As long as you continually to endorse it, we'll keep amending it to whatever. You know, obviously the leaks need to change. We'll add those changes. So, uh, so if you're good with those, we'll amend it. Yeah, and, that was one of the problems with it before. Every time you wanted to change a lead captain's name, right, it was disaster city. Mm -hmm. So the, the way we do is, is is through the year we can just write it was amended on this date, amended on this date, so people are aware that we amended it to this. I just um, have a question about that, if I could. Um, yep. It kind of came up today. People are buying passes based on a certain set of policies and procedures. So if they're buying the pass and we change a policy or a procedure, does that? I mean, that that could uh, impact. Well, you know, I don't think that's even a valid, valid argument. Yeah. Well, for, yeah, so for the leads, exactly so, uh, what what, yeah. That, what that comes down to is basically, if I don't get a given tea time every Sunday morning, I'm going to join. No, I understand, Dennis, but my point yeah. is, like when I when I signed up and I paid this year, yeah. you have to check off policies and right. procedures. Mm -hmm. So the policies and procedures I'm checking off are based on what are at, at that time. Right. Right. So it says as amended in the future. So I'm just yeah. wondering, it, yeah. Right. So that's why I will. Well, so if you were to go look at it again, the, the new document will say amended on this date. Amended on this date. Agreed. And for league play, it doesn't have the comments. It just says yeah. that there are, you know, the yeah. day. It, just says morning. It, it, right. does, it doesn't. It doesn't say. I'm just comments. talking about general policy. I know, but um, so we try to make sure that everything is pretty good before we start telling them this has been a weird year with everything. So. Yeah, I know. Um, Hopefully, we try to make sure changes. that everything's set in stone before we go into the season. That's exactly what we're kind of getting at. So on that league policy, where we've made some changes today, it probably would be a good idea to just resend it to everyone. With I'll recap everything. And recap the. Yep. I'll recap what happened. The letter we know. And then so everybody's aware. Yeah. All right. And then. Um, not the concerns, I think. Yeah, so I have two members concerns. It's not a concern, but I did receive this note on someone who wants to put together a golf radio station. Who saw this the other day? Yeah. Um, I did send facts saying that we would, the GEC would look at it and we would get back to it. I don't think that we want to support any. I, I think it's not a good idea. Um, it's somebody that's, that's a, a member that uh, had done a golf radio program in the past somewhere else. 50 years ago. 50 years ago. At least. And he's trying to start up a radio program and wants it to be sponsored by Yarmouth Golf, oh. um, which we wouldn't have anybody doing the program, number one. Number two, we don't have to be sponsoring any radio programs. Um, but if he wants to do a radio program and keep God, you know, good for him, yeah. but it shouldn't be affiliated. But it should not be connected with us. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And number three, Jim Hallett is my starter on Saturday mornings. He can't possibly do this. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, the other thing, well, the other thing I talked, well, I talked, I talked to Jim Hallett when you were there that day, and he really didn't know much about this, and he's being voted as one of the stars of the radio. Well, program. I have since received two more texts that Jim Hallett is very interested in getting this going and whatever, which is why I responded back, we would be reviewing with the GEC. And okay. so I think we, I would just send in the note back. We have reviewed it and we are not planning to sponsor any private. Yeah. And if you want to no, say you could. reviewed it and this is within the scope of the operations, we'll take care of it. Can I do that? That's probably the best way. If they're yeah. reaching out to you, just tell them that's it's so really scope it. operations. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Okay, I yeah. forward it on to Dennis. Yeah, yep. And you can spell Hallett, right? You can spell Hallett. Well, then, I still know. We're not going to. I gonna... got quite an email about. It. <laughs> okay, one, that one is the only concern I had. It's um, the it's next it's is it's three o'clock still two, okay three, for you guys two, moving forward for April. It was difficult today because <laughs> I had somebody. Well, see, uh, and again, we, we, 
So yeah, we made the and yeah. we made the change and we made the change specifically for you. Got yeah. it. So it's fine. Um, I mean, we'll have staff now. We don't have any staff yet. Okay, yeah. but so, by and April, then today I had staff. I would I'm I'm say let's try three o'clock in April and see when that gets us before okay. you know, before, before we move back to seven o'clock. <laughs> No, we don't want to enjoy the seven o'clock on our end. But once help is on board, it's easier. It's just, it was a thing. It's, it's a lot easier to maybe say you get Haley or Mark somebody at three o'clock than seven o'clock at night. It might be easier for you guys to attain that. So I would, I would say three o'clock. It would be uh, the second, the second Monday of the month, which would be probably the 13th. Uh, right. Well, Friday is April 1st. No, so, so that's so you have to go then April eighth is the following Friday. Wait, sorry, no, no, it's Monday. Monday, 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 second Monday. Second Monday, okay. I think so it's that the would be before. I thought eleven. It was the 11th. 11th. Okay. 11th. April eleventh. Because April fourth is Monday. April okay, so be the eleventh. All right, three o'clock. I got a quick question. Uh, uh, I'll I'll let you, uh, you. The three days and two days. When you first mentioned it, you mentioned it. A time after I was three days. I was in before got the process. Yeah. So wow. the way it's written now, it doesn't mention a time. So you could think that it, you know, twelve oh one on no. three days before. I could go in and make a tea time. It, it, it does does mention the time. It's on the website. It is on the website. It's on the website. So, it's it's well, I have you know, if it's, it's not on any, it's not on anything I've seen printed. Okay, but it's in it's in the website when you look on yeah, your membership. Yeah, but it's not it's yeah, not in this. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I, I did have one thing for next meeting. Yeah. For this meeting, if they want to, but I know I had asked questions about how are we going to deal with, or will we deal at all? Um, suggestions on how to deal with the, like uh, when Chelsea goes away and the point system goes away. If you know, if we're always having the same people getting the same times all the time without having any prioritization for those that. Don't live on the network. There, there was right. a suggestion. So the the non-tech savvy. Yeah, there was a suggestion that there were some things we might be able to do, and I just wondered if we could, if you've had any more time to look at that. And well, it's more. It's it. more. Um, profit currently doesn't do that. I know. So no, you're talking. There's there's nothing we can do. Point space, if you will. There's other things we can do. We'll right. Bring you, we'll bring you a list of what we can do if we're seeing that. We can. Yeah. Definitely make something some to at least modify it somewhat. Yep. We, we're going to see what this does and see how it does for a while. Understood. And then we start seeing something similar. Um, there's some things we can do in April written out in front of you. What what we can do if we see something. So this is what we, these are some course of actions we can do. It's gone well so far, but it's primarily because of local. Right, right. Yeah, we know that. And then, uh, but we'll see what happens. And we'll, we'll put it on the agenda for Which discussion is, of how it's going. And we'll we'll that way. Yeah. And here's what we to help combat some of these things that may pop up. Thank you. We can certainly limit things every which way. It's just from point space. So we will work with Buffrop to get you a list of what we can do to, to do it. But we're not, it's not the lottery anymore. I know. I want to be an open book in right away. Just concerned about the, I'm concerned about the people who don't play as much as some and I not being able to get time. So. Hopefully, with opening some more times, moving the league out, yep. getting that Sunday available, having the Saturday available, help. I'll think and so. It should help. Three, three days yeah. out. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. Yeah, that was here. And what time did you say it was after 7 o'clock? It starts at 7 p.m. this week. Wait. Yep. Yeah, to book for the board days, if you want to send them up. And like so that's that's something year. we can change well, too. That's not you know, you're saying that that's not working. We can, yeah. we can do that like <laughs> like that. Is that three days working? Because no, I didn't think it worked. No, we not. couldn't get on. Seven, it's seven. So the schedule, the schedule. So for example, to get a Friday tea time, to be able to go on the first Tuesday. time that you can do that is going to be on Tuesday at seven thirty. Right. So, Wednesday, 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 Wednesday at seven. So third and uh, first time for Saturday would be Thursday. Why wouldn't it be two? Because Friday is the weekend. Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 
It's Monday through Thursday we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Again, um, there's been a lot that's going on in the industry in Yarmouth with COVID. And I tip my hat to Scott every day for the great job you and your team does. Yeah, so it's thank a, you. It's not me, it's it's these guys, it's the maintenance guys, they're in operation. We, we can't be successful without everybody. These guys are amazing. The maintenance team's amazing. Oh, you did a good day. Thank you all job for being today. Flexible. Yes. Thank you for doing yes. that. I trust me, I'm not gonna look pretty on Sunday mornings at 5 30 a.m. <laughs> okay, um, I okay. think we're at that point. Let, does anybody else have areas of concern that I have to catch? Dick, any? No, nope. okay. Okay, no. Nope. Okay, so all we do is begin, uh, we have a roll call. Well, first of all, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, wait a minute. Right. Uh, we have uh, uh, comments from the public. Yeah. Technically, we're not supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. You can, but you can tell us right after we adjourn. I saw the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Roll we'll call. Okay. You were good with uh, adjourning. Adjourning. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm good. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yay. <laughs> you can have to What's up, Ralph? <laughs> so.